A quick history of mobile app development. In mid-2007, the iOS mobile operating system was released, and late 2008 came Android. For a very short period of time, if you wanted an app to be available on both of these platforms, you'd have to develop essentially two different apps, each with their own code base, one for Android and the other one for iOS. This is called native app development. In no time at all, in 2009, PhoneGap, currently known as Apache Cordova, came to be and introduced a concept of hybrid app development, a way to develop for both Android and iOS simultaneously in one codebase, thus, in theory, removing the need to have two separate teams to develop native apps. This is a trend that will continue to grow each year with new companies introducing new technologies every couple of years. In 2011, we got Samarin, and in 2015, we got Facebook React Native, as well as Drift Eco's Ionic. By this time, it seemed like we had quite a few different technologies to choose from if you wanted to build hybrid mobile apps. But each one of these frameworks fell short for a number of reasons. App performance was notably lower in hybrid apps built with any of these, none of them could capture the native look and feel of each platform, and it was quite difficult to get the same layout, design, and functionality to work in both platforms. Thus to this date, native app development is still generally the preferred method if you wanted quality apps. However, in December of 2018, the hybrid development framework Flutter 1.0 was released, and it may have leveled the playing field. Flutter is a framework created by Google to revolutionize the world of hybrid app development. It runs as a Dart programming language, a language that was also created by Google, and it brought forth high hopes in many developers from its very first reveal in 2015 under the codename Sky. It was shown running on an Android device at a consistent 120 frames per second, something nobody seen before in a hybrid app. But it wasn't just smooth performance that made Flutter a strong contender to change the mobile meta. It can also generate views that are both beautiful and consistent between both platforms, and includes a feature called Hot Reload, which lets developers instantly see changes in their code without having to recompile their whole app. This is especially noticeable to native Android developers like me, who sometimes have to wait several minutes just to see a small change in the code. With the engine and tools that Flutter brings to the table, it may seem like hybrid app development is a new way to go for mobile app development in 2020, but whether you suspect that to be the case or you're an avid believer in native apps, we're putting it all to the test. We're going to be comparing hybrid app development using Flutter to native app development in these categories, and we'll be categorizing not only the resulting app developed by each method, but also the development process to see whether hybrid app development really is the better method in 2020. Now, I've done both Flutter and Android development, but not iOS development, so for the most part, we'll be comparing Flutter to Android. I do believe iOS should follow through most of the same points as Android, but if you're an iOS developer just urging to prove me wrong, feel free to do so down in the comments. Hybrid app's goal is to look and feel like a native app. Flutter provides a host of widgets, building blocks for an app's layout. They do an amazing job at nailing the look and feel of material design components for Android, as well as Cupertino for iOS. This to the point that you can present two versions of the same layout to someone. One's built in Flutter and one's built natively in about the same amount of time and that person wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And it's already been proven from its very first reveal that Flutter apps can render at 120 frames per second on devices that can support it otherwise at 60 frames per second by default. Generally, you don't have to worry about app performance while developing Flutter apps, unless the nature of the app you're building is memory intensive, but in that case, native apps would be no different. So this win goes to Flutter. For this category, we'll be considering everything that goes into making the development process a quick and smoother experience, from programming language, IDEs, and other such features. Android's primary language is Kotlin, a huge upgrade to the previously used German how clean and concise code can be, as well as the powerful use of null and type safety. I personally describe it as beautifully dramatic, yet safe. As someone who's experienced developing with Java and Kotlin, I can say that Kotlin does an amazing job at making code more maintainable and scalable, both in how much easier it is to write clean code, as well as to prevent bugs from cropping up. I'm sure a similar case can be said about Objective-C in Swift for iOS. Android uses the Android Studio IDE, which is a special version of IntelliJ IDE tailored to Android development, created by Google. And iOS uses Xcode. Both offer powerful features to develop for their respective platforms, and come with a host of plugins. 
Android Studio especially excels in this category, as you can make use of plugins built for the base version of IntelliJ IDEA. Where Android falls short, however, is in its compile time. If you want to see the result of your code changes, you have to recompile your whole app again, which can take anywhere from 30 seconds to several minutes, depending on the size of your app. Android Studio does cache compiled components wherever it gets a chance to make the process faster, but this can occasionally cause confusing errors in your build, especially when you're working with multiple Git branches. And when this happens, get ready for a painstakingly long wait as you rebuild your project. Flutter's primary language is Dart, and alas, it does require semicolons, which always catch me off because I'm used to developing in the semicolon free land of Kotlin. Overall, I feel like Kotlin has much more to offer than Dart. But one thing I do love about Dart is how it handles callbacks. You can simply label a function as async, and suddenly, you can write a synchronous code as if it were synchronous by making use of the await keyword. In simpler terms, network calls do not require callbacks. Well, at least you can make it look like so. As amazing as that is, however, I believe Kotlin's coroutines does a better job at this. It might require a little bit more groundwork to set up, but the trade-off is better control of your async calls, threads, and better error handling. Flutter offers more flexibility in terms of IDEs. Some commonly used ones are Android Studio, IntelliJ IDEA, VS Code, and Emacs, but that list isn't exhausted by any means. Where Flutter truly shines is its hot reload feature, which allows you to see changes to your code instantly without having to recompile the whole app. This is especially useful when building a UI, but it's not perfect. Code that gets executed when you start your app, like in the init state method of your page, doesn't get executed again when you hot reload. And dialogs don't necessarily show the changes instantly without triggering the event that shows the dialog in the first place. Still, hot reload is an amazing feature that significantly increases developer productivity with Flutter. This puts Flutter ahead of the game, and thus gives Flutter another point. Don't even bring up the Android Instant Switch feature. That thing's defective. Thanks to being in the ecosystem for so long, there are a huge number of libraries for Android. Some of them have become the de facto way of performing certain tasks. Such libraries include Retrofit for making API calls, Dagger for dependency injection, Mokito for mocking classes and unit tests, and so on. Such libraries have stood the test of time and grown along with the platform, making them great and reliable for use in production apps. So much so that I do a top 10 list of these libraries every half a year. Link to the February 2021 down in the description. Flutter does have a great set of libraries, and what's even better is that pub.dev exists, a central area where you can find most if not all of these plugins, which Android doesn't have. That being said, Flutter hasn't been around for too long, and thus doesn't have near the number of libraries as Android and iOS. But what about the big shots? What about the libraries that do matter? Flutter does have access to some bigger names like RxDart and Firebase, and while these are well developed on their own rights, they're not as stable or reliable as their native counterparts. Native apps take the winner in this one. Yes, I know we just talked about how libraries are more reliable in native apps, because it's time to build them up of course, but wouldn't it be the same for the platform itself? Now let's forget about the libraries for a second. Take two developers of similar skills to develop a Flutter app and a native app. And which do you think would be less prone to bugs and crashing? Let's go back to the languages. Kotlin enforces strong null and type safety, meaning that in most situations where you're likely to crash because of a null pointer exception or a class cast exception or something like that, you'll fail to compile. And yes, that's a good thing. I found no such feature when coding with Dart. In fact, it seems like you have so much flexibility to the point that it's a sin. Yes, I'm looking at you. Dynamic. I can never understand what's going on with this data type. Trying to cast it to an actual data type like string in situations where I know it's a string gives me a class class exception more often than not. And methods that do seem to work don't seem to be functions belonging to the dynamic class. Like, I can get a timestamp object from Firestorm, and of course, Flutter fetches it as a dynamic, and I just put dot today to the end of it and it just works. Today isn't a native method of dynamic, it just works, and it shouldn't. Don't even compare Dynamic to the Any class of Kotlin and Swift. They are nothing alike. Any doesn't just give you the option to break your app without being heavily aware of what you're doing. The worst part about it is in another situation where Dynamic isn't secretly a timestamp, the app's gonna crash. If you haven't wrapped it around in a try catch statement at the very least. Anyway, let's talk about error handling. Of course, both Flutter and Natives can make use of try catch statements. That's just a thing in a lot of programming languages, C based ones especially. But what's the ideal way of handling an error for each of these frameworks? 
say you have a solid architecture. Not necessarily solid, it could be, but you know, simply a well-defined architecture, yeah? At the very least, you should have presentation and a domain layer. The presentation layer is completely unaware of what goes on in the domain layer. But wherever an error happens, you want to handle it gracefully, and in many cases this means showing it to the user. Even if the error happens in the domain layer, you want the presentation layer to relay that information to the UI, often in the form of a dialogue. On Android, the chances are you're using RxJava and Coroutines. In either case, you'll have an easier time handling these errors, and wherever they happen, you can delegate them back to the presentation layer and show them as a dialogue to the user or something like that. On Flutter, yeah, you got the same kind of error handling as RxJava if you're using RxDart, but otherwise, you'll have to rely on callbacks, try catch statements, and monads, which are great, but by no means easy to get right. If it wasn't clear enough from my little rant about dynamic, native apps went here. Now we're tied two for two here, so here's a tiebreaker. Which is a better choice for a business to invest in? The winner may involve higher costs, but exponentially higher returns. It's native apps. The two points where Flutter won over native apps are app performance and design and developer productivity. So let's talk about those. It's great that Flutter can design a UI that looks beautiful on both Android and iOS, but you don't generally spend a great deal of time developing layouts as well as you would working on functionality and debugging. Not to mention, Jetpack Compose and Swift UI are changing the way layouts are built on Android and iOS, and when they're production ready, building layouts natively could be faster than ever. And while Hot Reload is a great tool for dishing out code at a faster rate, the stronger resilience, reliability, and availability of plugins on native apps means that you'll be spending less time debugging and more time dishing out code you need. Absence of bugs is everything about the quality of an app. We want the number of bugs on our projects to go down, which means that we want the amount of code to go down. But Flutter isn't very far behind in the race. And given a few years, Flutter and hybrid app development might become the new norm. In any case, you can't ignore Flutter, and it's well worth paying attention to because you never know what's going to happen. But for now, the winner is Native Apps. <laughs> if you like this video, give that like button a good old smash. Subscribe for more Android and Flutter related content, and I'll see you in the next video.